Hello, and welcome to Fabric Espresso, the series about data engineering and data science. My name is Estera, and today I'm joined with Jean. Jean, can you please start with introduction and sharing what are the cool features you're working on? Okay, sounds great. Hello, everyone. This is Jean Zhang. I'm a senior program man manager in Microsoft, and I'm currently working on the Fabric Notebook features. I've been working on this role for almost two years. We started from scratch, and now we are really close to the global available state. So it's really exciting. And uh, I'm really happy to sit here, talk with you, share some latest uh, update on the Fabric Notebook, and let our audience who are interested on Fabric Notebook know what's happening now and the features I am working on. Thank you. So let's start with digging into uh, notebooks in Microsoft Fabric. So can we start with the brief overview of what Fabric notebooks are, how they are different for, for example, Synapse from Jupyter notebooks and or like, some other traditional notebooks? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think that's a really good question. Um, the Fabric notebook is kind of a web-based uh, interactive surface uh, that is used by the data scientists and the data engineers to write the big data analytic jobs uh, using Spark. Um, the data engineers always use notebook to do the data ingestion, data preparation, and data transformation. Uh, while data scientists use notebook to build their machine learning solutions, including building the experiment and the models, and they use it to do the model tracking deployment, the Fabric notebook is uh, most likely the main playground to write code and uh, to do the following tasks. Um, so comparing to the uh, origin, original Synapse notebook, uh, uh, the Fabric one is actually built on a SaaS platform. And uh, we are trying to deliver a lot of SaaS-like features, for example, the local experience collaborative features, live pool to spin up a session within just a few seconds, and we have very tight integration with Lakehouse, easier integration with uh, easier interaction with Power BI report, dashboard, et cetera. Uh, so to me, I feel the main difference compared to the Synapse one is we emphasize more on the easy of use part. We want to make sure that the user feels programming on Fabric Notebook is just as simple as writing docs using uh, Microsoft Word. The next um, product uh, comparing to the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, firstly, I feel the target audience uh, is different because the Fabric Notebook is more uh, focusing on the developers who are working around data. So it's a tool designed for data scientists and the data engineer and the, the uh, primary system user of uh, data analyst. And uh, it's tightly integrated with uh, the um, Fabric One Lake, Lake House, and other Fabric data items. So most users use the Fabric Notebook to do the data analytic tasks like the cleaning, transformation, exploration, and the training, uh, machine learning models training. Uh, and the, the Fabric Notebook, uh, one specific part is it can be very easily modulized in a data pipeline to play a part on the uh, data uh, production region. And uh, uh, the following uh, characteristic on um, Fabric Notebook comparing to the uh, Jupyter one is it has a lot of Spark specific user. It's almost a Spark notebook, uh, such like we provide using a Spark compute. Uh, we use uh, we provide the high concurrency mode to share a Spark session. We provide job inline monitor, job um, diagnostics. And uh, we have a library called MS Spark Utils, which is a uh, uh, API, uh, which can be um, used for a lot of common pattern tasks to do the Spark jobs, etc. Um, so I feel that's the most different part. But on the other hand, we also have a lot of in common comparing to the Jupyter, um, because we want we really want to make Jupyter user feels like at home as well. Um, because um, the Jupyter U uh, is so popular in the industrial uh, and the in, in the fabric uh, as well as Synapse, we are using the iPython kernel by default. So we support almost all the building 
magic commands, uh, Ipython widgets, uh, that's provided by the uh, Jupyter Ipython kernel. And uh, we are using uh, the exact same keyboard shortcut with the Jupyter notebook. So I feel users shouldn't feel the gaps when they are moving to the Fabric notebook. Thank you so much uh, for, for providing the full context. So what I hear is that uh, we build on the, we as a Microsoft, we build our uh, Fabric notebooks on the giant arms of Jupyter notebooks at the same time. Uh, we enhance the experience to accommodate all the needs of data scientists, uh, all the needs of data engineers who are going to do different operations on top of the one lake, lake house uh, data. Yeah, and that's a great summary. Okay, um, let's get started. So here is the notebook uh, uh, I'm working on, and uh, I would like to demonstrate a few highlighted parts Comparing to the original Synapse Notebook one, for example, we want to support a lot of uh, drag and drop experience to make it very easy to use. Uh, this is a lake house pinned to the side. This is a, the data artifact notebook interact with very frequently. So we support to drag and drop a table from lake house. Let's do it right now. And uh, not only about tables, we also support the drag and drop and structure the data from lake house. For example, here is the file section of a lake house, and we can just uh, use some uh, drag and drop to generate some code snippet. And let's run it. Then uh, it's quite a good feature because we can also change the code format uh, code uh, according to the different cell language. For example, I want to switch the Python to a Scala cell, and uh, we can uh, drag and drop a parquet file again to see the code, because sometimes we want to accelerate the execution time. Oh, seems this code is run successfully. You can also see the session really spin up very quickly, just within a few seconds. Let's run another code cell to see. Uh, Scala also works well in the mixed uh, language context. Okay, you can see the data right now. And moving to the next, I also want to introduce a new feature called Notebook Resources. It's just uh, aside from the Lake House Explorer, this is a, a built-in uh, resources folder for each notebook. The built-in folder is automatically created when you create a brand new notebook. And this folder, you can uh, upload a lot of your small pieces of data and the Python modules and the images. You can uh, easily create new folders uh, inside this one, organize your own folder structure. And we also support a lot of code snip snippet. So uh, similarly to the lake house interaction, you can easily drag and drop it. And uh, we will generate the code snippet for the support, built-in supported format. Now you can see the uh, image rendered in the output section. And uh, we uh, the most, uh, uh, the highlighted part I want to uh, showcase here is we do support drag and store the Python modules here. For example, I just uploaded a uh, PY files and uh, it's stored in a subfolder I just created. And I can also drag and drop, then run the code. It will list all the available functions inside this Python module. So it's very convenient if you want to, if you are developing uh, in a local desktop tool, for example, VS Code, and you want to test if that module works in Fabric. So just upload it and uh, it will uh, work well uh, with other uh, code cells in the notebook. You can just import it directly. Uh, the next part I want to emphasize is the collaborative dev tool experience in notebook. Uh, you can see we do support uh, notebook sharing here, click this button, then I can share this notebook with someone else. 
and I can customize the permissions uh, to let different user have different view of this notebook. After I click this apply, maybe we can just try it with Astra. Uh, so this is the one I will just uh, copy the link. Yeah, now we can see Astra has opened this notebook and uh, we can also click go to the location. Uh, here I am already focusing on the cell Astra is working on and we can tap something together and we can do the real time co-editing. So this is really a useful feature when we, we want to do some uh, code sharing and do the real-time debug, etc. So happy to try it. Um, the next, yeah, that's great. Thank you, Etra. Um, the next feature I want to highlight is the commenting feature. So you can see I have I already have a code cell here, and this sentences is marked with some colored background because there is a comment selected this piece of uh, words and we I already add a comment here uh, after click this there will we can see a comment pen you can easily add new comments and reply to others here we also support we are working on a tagging feature I feel that will come very soon if we have the tag feature then you can uh, have another way to share the notebook to other collaborators and team members you are working on. That's a pretty useful one. Um, moving to the next, uh, the next heavy part is about the immersive authing. Uh, why we call it immersive authing? Because we really want to uh, deliver a smooth experience on um, programming to make a best uh, developing tool for the data scientists and the data engineers. Uh, for example, we currently support auto sale mode and manual sale mode. Uh, if you notice everything we tapped here, it will trigger an auto save here. It will uh, show uh, saving saved as you are tapping. Uh, and we also have a manual save mode, uh, which is here you can switch. Uh, for example, if I don't want to uh, continue co-editing with others, for example, I don't I want to have a local branch on my local a browser. I don't want others to distract me uh, when co-editing, and I want to click the save button manually. It's just the user's habits. We can always switch to the manual save mode. The apples work well in Fabric Notebook, and we can also easily distinguish the save options on the status bar. So moving to the next is the language service. So today I want to demo a feature that is uh, we a recently released, which is the auto completion for lake house table name. I just can tap a very quick code snippet here, like spark read table. Oh, yeah, here you can see the lake house tables are fully recognized and listed here. Then you can very easily to pick one table and click run. So as you can see, we support a lot of uh, built-in code snippet. When you drag and drop, we support different formats, for example, text formats, JSON formats, image formats. You can try it. Uh, you can get a lot of surprise from it. So feel, feel free to try it and welcome to report to us what's your favorite um, file format and we will support it in the future re release. Now, uh, more than that, we also have um, built-in code snippet language service. For example, I tap write keyword, then we will see a lot of um, code snippet built-in that can help me uh, to write some with different uh, storage tabs. Um, for example, I can use the data um, databases to store my output result from the uh, uh, outcoming of my notebook is really convenient to use. Um, yeah. So in terms of a Python kernel, as I explained, we want to uh, reach the feature parity 
comparing to the Jupyter Notebook. So we by default adopt the IPython kernel. And the IPython widgets is also supported here. We can try to import the IPython widgets. Here I just list two very popular widgets um, uh, to illustrate how to use it. And uh, you can find uh, all the uh, functions, all the available widgets in the Jupyter widgets document. And uh, more than that, we have a, a customized display function, which can also uh, support to render the uh, widget uh, object. So uh, you can just use the seamless function comparing to the normal display to uh, display your own widgets object. Uh, other than that, we also support the magical command. We have two categories here. The first one is built-in magics, uh, which is also uh, almost all the uh, Jupyter IPython uh, commands is supported in the uh, Fabric one. Uh, more than that, we have a few customized uh, magics. You can find it in the Fabric document. I just picked the most popular uh, two uh, to this demo. First one is about the uh, percentage run notebook. Uh, for example, I have a notebook called the child notebook. I just uh, opened it here and uh, it has function to return the string value. This string is, this message is come from the child notebook and there has another cell to read the files from a lake house. So when come back to the original notebook, you can see after we call this run magical command, the messages is uh, uh, output uh, into the canvas correctly. So we can call the notebook as a module very easily uh, to work as a, a orchestration product. And uh, here is another very uh, important command here. We do support pep and conda to install uh, libraries. Um, for example, bulk is a very popular um, uh, virtualization um, library, and we want to pep install it to the current session. And uh, it will just work in. Oh, you can see it's installing. And later on, we can call it in the um, rest of your cells. More than that, we do support you to register the custom magic. For example, I'm following the document to write uh, a custom magic called uh, create my lake house. And after I run the register line magic cell, I can call it in the following cell. Then it can show that this function really works well with my custom magic. And moreover, uh, around the authoring topic, we do have a lot of different features already existing in the Fabric notebook. You can just go to the ribbon to browse them one by one. There are a lot of rich features here. For example, uh, I have a lot of content uh, in this uh, demo, so we can give a very brief preview in the content part. And I can also uh, collapse the section, and the cell will just fold in synchronously. So this is pretty useful when you are doing a, a notebook with more sections and cells. It's very easy to organize your notebook uh, with a, a nice structure. Um, next part, I want to demonstrate the virtualization. Uh, we have a lot of virtualization um, topics around the notebook. The first one is about um, the built-in display function. For example, we just use the display to uh, show uh, files through the drag and drops Code snippet, and after we run the cell, there are actually two types in the output. First one is the, the table view. The second one is the chart view, which can visualize the uh, table uh, 
data of table, and you can see the uh, there is uh, options here. You can change the different chart type. For example, I want to change it to a column chart, and I can also change the keys, values. Uh, this is a, a distribution of jobs and age, but the sum is not really um, make sense here. So I want to change it to average. Then I can just click apply. Then we can uh, easily do the uh, basic data exploration here. And uh, we are working on a more advanced uh, data exploration feature to enhance this display. And uh, that feature is uh, upcoming in the GA scope. So please stay tuned to uh, see the more advanced inspect feature for the rich data frame preview. And uh, uh, following this, the display also have an attribute called a summary. And in, in the display summary uh, function, you can see a different uh, view, which can show the more statistics of, about the data. And you can also discover some uh, potential data quality issue. For example, I just displayed the data frame we, just, we, we showed before. And uh, here is the summary view. Uh, if you click to one row, uh, which is the, the a column, and you will see the distribution and uh, some statics, uh, statistics of this row. And uh, here, there is uh, also um, useful part is we counting the missing values automatically. So if you click here, you will see some missing values. And we know this data frame has some quality issue and auto layers, et cetera. And we can easily do the data cleaning uh, based on the uh, exploration result. So this is a very useful feature when you are just exploring the new uh, data from uh, uh, Lake House or other databases someone shared to you. Uh, we do also support the open source um, Python um, uh, library to do the visualization. For example, we can just import Seabone and we can show a fancy visualization chart based on the uh, generated data frame. And uh, as I just uh, uh, illustrate how we can use the pep install command, we can just use the bulk, uh, we just, the library we just installed to render some more advanced chart. It may take longer time because this uh, image, this chart is always faster than I'm thinking. And the widgets here is all usable. You can use a lot of built-in uh, chart functions provided by the bulk, the library. So it's quite uh, advanced. I know a lot of data scientists would love, would love to use it. Um, the last but not the least, it's not really about the data visualization, but we do support to uh, show the images in a markdown cell very convenient. So as I can uh, uh, squeeze this a little bit, and I prepared a small uh, fabric logo on my uh, Windows desktop, I can just easily drag and drop it, and it will show automatically. Thank you so much for a very deep dive uh, and detailed demo of the current features and also of mentioning what is uh, coming soon. So what I see from the data engineering and data science perspective is that, yes, we build on the giant arms of Jupyter Notebook, but at the same time, tons of, the imp tons of improvements. For example, drag and drop for Lake House table. That's super unique. And uh, the, the last feature that I can just drag and drop images from my local PC is just making the preparation of the notebook seamless. And with the connection of the content, within a couple of minutes, I can just have the, for example, the notebook prepared for my lab that I'm, I'm for example, leading or uh, also the notebook that the, the experience of co-authoring is allowing us to do uh, pair programming, also to do uh, immediate code review, just to check. So uh, I really love the experience. Th again, thank you so much for, for sharing. Can you mention what we are going to do? Stop. 
can we can you please mention um, about the next episode what we are going to discuss? Yeah, for sure. Uh, in the next episode, I would like to demonstrate uh, the Microsoft Spark Utilities, which is uh, called MS Spark Utils. Uh, that is an API uh, tool that we can call in the notebook uh, very conveniently, and it supports multiple very useful functions. For example, the mount and mount, then you can bring your own external storage to the notebook very conveniently. And uh, we do support the reference run using MS Spark Utils as well. Then you can use it to uh, uh, invoke your notebook uh, in, within a workspace and you can easily uh, add it into the pipeline to make it very flexible to execute with, uh, with uh, all the orchestrated notebooks. And it also supports the credential utils. Then you can, uh, you can get your keyword, keys, uh, tokens into the notebook so that you can use the code experience to access to a lot of databases and uh, storage account. And we, we also have a file system utils. That is also a highlighted part uh, of MS Spark utils. You can um, just work with the external storage uh, similarly with the, your local computer or cluster, you can use the all the file system command similarly with the Linux command. Uh, so it's really a lot of fancy features there. So super excited to, to see firstly to record this episode and also then to, to watch it. So Jean, thank you so much for joining today and sharing all the details. Uh, for those who are watching us, please remember to hit the like button. Please remember to drop a comment. Um, you can drop a question, also the ideas for the next episodes. And if you heard, if you are using, and if you heard about MS Spark Utils, just watch the ne next episode with Jane. If not, and you want to discover what the library is about, join us as well. And uh, thank you for today. See you for, thank you for today and see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you, Etra. Thank you, everyone.